breaks the run in overtime to basically seal the game. Here's Derek Henry on Lamar post game. That was like uh, third MVP of uh, uh, level for him. Um, that was that was like a uh, yeah that one of a kind of game. Just especially the one where he was he was getting sacked, got out the pocket, uh, kept running down. I was out of bounds through that ball back to Zay. That was just, you know, that's why Lamar is who Lamar is and best player in the league. He, he, he's a GOAT for a reason. Okay, Brew, how confident <laughs> are you in the Ravens? I mean, this is Wilds, it was a tough weekend. <laughs> my goodness. Whew. I thought we were going to go into Cincinnati. Yeah, and do what? My, my, one of my hometowns. Yep. And just have at it with the Bengals. Remember, I pre predicted a two touchdown yeah, victory. I remember. Blowout. And it was a fight. It was an <laughs> all around Donnie Brook up in there. Mm -hmm. I barely got my robe. They almost ripped my robe off. <laughs> you see, the sunglasses are all askew. Yeah, we do. I only got one Jordan. Only I one couldn't shoe. even get out with two, and it's no, barely on. Barely, barely, barely up. Foot. All right, yeah. and then I just grabbed whatever I could to eat this well, sandwich. I mean, I just and you made grabbed that in it. Cincinnati. And I, well, I tried to make it, and they wouldn't <laughs> let me. That, I just grabbed what was left, and then this. I, I, <laughs> didn't even get a full soda pop. <laughs> Just this little bit, but you know what? Woo! I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, W's are hard to come by in the NFL. That's true. And so they got it. Mm -hmm. Lamar was fantastic. Exa out of breath. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was it was rough up in there. My <laughs> gosh. I, and and Nick, again, I'll take the win. But there were some – I got some concerns. Okay. I've got some concerns. First of all, the defense. I mean – If you'd be more comfortable taking your foot down. You feel <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. You guys okay. be more comfortable. No, no, you're fine. Whatever you want. <laughs> Just yeah, 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 you're fine. I mean, yeah, I'd be every quarterback – Looks like a, an all-pro like against the Ravens' defense. Yeah. All f four of the five <laughs> they've faced have had their best or most passing yards of the season against the Ravens. That's Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody except Josh yes, Allen. exactly. Everybody except Josh Allen. So the defense is a problem. I know Marlon Humphrey came up with a big play, which was good. But they can't be given field day, having every quarterback have a field day against the defense. And then offensively, now obviously they put up a ton of points, mm -hmm. which was great. Derrick Henry, they, there's the problem, and, and we saw it when they faced the Chiefs. When they get behind, they get away from giving the ball to Derrick Henry. exactly what the Coach Chiefs, said might, might happen. Yeah, and, that, and that's what they did. So against the Chiefs, he only ran for thir 13 times which was a season low, like, yeah. okay? 14, 15, Yesterday, today. he runs. They're up most of the first half. He's got 10 carries for 27 yards. I know he wasn't getting a lot of yards, but still, he wears down the defense. Cincinnati takes the lead right before halftime. The second half, not overtime, the second half, Derrick Henry has one carry yeah. for three yards, and then overtime, of course, he has pops four carries, big. pops the big one, 62 yards for all, total in the, in the overtime. So... They still – I don't know that you fully need to get away from Henry. Mm -hmm. They were down 10, I get it. But they got to figure out how to, you know, be better with well, that I, because that's their identity and you can't just – and Lamar is throwing it great. I think the numbers don't bear it out, but I think he's probably throwing it the best he ever has. Yeah. Accuracy and all that, poise in the pocket. But they, their identity still is running the ball. So they, they got I, away from that. The, so you hit on, and this is why you're the you know, conscience of the show, because mm -hmm. instead of just <laughs> preening about the Ravens winning, there I'm were some le you're <laughs> fine. There were some legitimate concern points, mm -hmm. and I think you touched on them. I have a different theory about them getting away from running the ball. I think there is something about Todd Munkin and that team when another one of the superhero quarterbacks is on the other side of the field, that they want to let Lamar go blow for blow with them. Especially, like now, the, the Bills game, I'm not throwing it out, but that was a weird game because it was so out of hand right. so yeah. quickly. But it was, and by the way, it's not like the Ravens often struggled. They scored say, 41 just, points. There was no problem dominant. with it, and Lamar right. played great. That's the other thing I wanted to but say. But will that work against well, better defense? Well, that's, that, would be, that would be the concern. Now, Lamar gets an A+. Plus. I will talk about right. Burrow in a bit, but I thought both quarterbacks had similar games in that they were almost flawless, except they both had one 
Huge mistake that could have cost their team the game. Burrow was the pick, Lamar the fumble, but they were brilliant yeah, from start yeah. to finish through the air, very similar stat lines. But the defense is so bad, I don't think you can feel more confident in the, them as a team and Super Bowl chances than you did before the game. Like Lamar and L Lamar gets an A+. Derrick Henry, even though he didn't have an opportunity to wear down the defense, still popped yeah. that big run. Isaiah likely for the first game mm -hmm. really since week one, you know, showed up yeah. big time again. The offense was great. But this is the worst Ravens defense that I can remember. And as far as every team going to work on them, they've played five games. 20, giving up 25 or more points in four of their five games this year, it's those two teams. So that's yeah. a jarring stat. By the way, only the Bengals have done it more than twice other than these teams. The Bengals have done it three times. These teams have done it four. No one else has done it more than twice. So Weird. that part is really concerning. Yeah. But going into the game, on this show at least, a lot of it was Lamar versus Burrow, who do you trust more, and, you know, who's going to have a better game. And me as the biggest, I guess, Lamar skeptic is, I guess, I think a fair way to call it, I thought he played brilliantly. I thought he was excellent throughout and had a couple special Lamar moments yeah. that really... Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, there's a few things I really want to unpack. First... I'll say off the top that this was an unbelievable game, obviously. Um, you know, this is the games. These are the types of games that the NFL wants to have all the time. Why they change the rules in the way. They, they love this. 41-38, right, back and forth. Quarterbacks just putting up cartoonishly high numbers, right? Having Lamar Jackson fumble the snap, scramble, stiff arm, I mean, and then throw, going out of bounds, right? Like, that's that that's just you know next level insanity right i mean it, it really is remarkable um but then of course you fumble the snap you give the ball up and and right and now both teams really had the chance to win um right joe burrow the interception um lamar jackson fumbling the snap and unable to recover it and the Bengals then could have won. And then you have the fumbled snap also for the field goal. I mean, that's really what – I know he got it up right at the right time, but as they even talked about on the broadcast, that's enough to just disrupt everything. So the Ravens were fortunate to come out, you know, with a win for this. Make no mistake about it. But this is where I'll separate from what Nick is saying. Because I, I do appreciate – that they're able to still criticize even after a win. And I want to hope hope they keep that same energy when they talk about some other teams like the Dallas Cowboys um, or why not the Kansas City Chiefs or any of these other teams. So it's interesting to really only ever see them do it about teams like the Ravens, uh, the Eagles, the 49ers, right? It's always the teams that they don't really like or believe in. But anyway, I digress. Um it is always, and that's why I always try to talk about both positive and negative of, of any of these teams. Um, but I feel like the negatives were addressed. And so I want to kind of emphasize the positives for the Baltimore Ravens because one, they showed that they can win a bizarre, both A plus and ugly game, right? Like this was both A plus and ugly because of some of the, the weird turnovers, the fumbles, right? Like it was a high scoring back and forth game uh, going, going from, you know, uh, being down and all of that. So it was both a great game, had moments of perfection and also moments of obviously ugly. Like granted, I mean, Lamar's fumbling t twice essentially, right? And granted, I know he was able to turn it into an absolute highlight reel. It, it's still like, it was ugly, but that he was able to make something out of nothing, um, which was, you know, again, as I emphasized, was quite remarkable. And right, and getting away from Derrick Henry, th that will always be concerning. I don't know if it's because they want to put Lamar, you know, in the spotlight like Nick is highlighting. That was what was rumored last year in the playoffs, why they decided to not run the ball, that they wanted to show that Lamar can pass and do all this type of stuff. Whether that's true or not, I've kind of already discussed that months and months and months ago. So I'm not going to kind of unpack it there, but... I don't watch this game and now have less confidence in their in their ability to win a Super Bowl because at the end of the day, yes, you could say it's a little concerning of their defense. That's understandable. But at the end of the day, it's can they put up points? Can they put up points? That's how they're going to win. 
if they were able to put up points, they beat the Chiefs. They could not put up points. They could not move the ball down the field. They could not get into the end zone. They could not win a game that was getting a little bit ugly or a little bit out of control or out of reach, right? They proved that against the Bengals. And giving up all these points, I'm less concerned about because Joe Burrow is an unbelievable quarterback. An unbelievable quarterback. I understand people have really fallen out of favor of Joe Burrow, right? Because they just look at some of his injuries and and some of the weapons that he's been able to have. Joe Burrow is an unbelievable quarterback. No question about it, right? So he's going to be able to put up the numbers. He's going to be able to have those moments and have those games uh so i again i don't watch this game and think i have less confidence in this you want to see growth you want to see the offense for the for the ravens be a little bit more composed a little bit less sporadic feeling a little bit more organized um which i'm going to highlight i think they did in the first drive and then you want to obviously see the defense a little bit better but sometimes games like this happen so to see them be able to come out on top, even if a little bit of it did involve luck, like the missed field goal and stuff like that, um, then, you know, so be it. But it's still, to me, it's still a a big win. But right, it's not a flawless win. Because even in the final possession for the Bengals, right, uh, offensive possession, like the the Ravens had great defense to to force the overtime, right? Like they they stepped up when when they needed to. but this is the other thing that I really wanted to right because then they also had the safety and stuff right unblocked like that was just bad. Um, but the real thing that I wanted to um, that I wanted to the point out there's two main things because the opening drive showed the exact brand of football that the Baltimore Ravens should play right. It was hard physical runs. It was quick runs. It was using Henry and Lamar right um, and Hill even right and using easy throws for Lamar they were able to move the ball they were able to do what they needed to do they weren't forcing the ball they weren't forcing runs they weren't just doing physical they did a little bit of everything everybody got involved every the offense really had a rhythm to it and it was working right and then they do get away with it uh, get away from that style of play and then right um it becomes it became disjointed as soon I wrote down as soon as the run was contained offense became disjointed right they only had 15 carries uh and and lamar had 12 i personally don't want to see that i personally do not think that that is a sustainable way of playing football having your quarterback essentially have the same number same number of carries as your as your running back it's just it's just not sustainable it's okay to do in a game and they gotta have a game in the playoffs whatever it may be i understand that but to me the problem is that the ravens still too regularly um rely on that and it's and it's just problematic it wears you down uh wears you down throughout the course of a season it wears you down throughout the course of a game it wears you down throughout a playoff run um it 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 actually gets a little bit of a, a you know a little upsetting from other players quite frankly right the receivers are a little frustrated by it um the running backs are a little frustrated by it the offensive line sometimes gets frustrated by it like it, it can just get frustrating if you're winning and you're winning rings and you're like oh this is what we do but when you don't have that success and you don't have that hardware that's when it can also kind of be problematic and so and again it's never been proven to work for the the Ravens historically, right? So it's not like we're just making this up. And just because you haven't done it in the past doesn't mean that you can't do it in the future. It just doesn't seem to be the best game plan from my viewpoint. And again, look no further than that opening drive, right? Like that had a little bit of everything. That had so much more rhythm and flow and to me was so much more of a dangerous drive than really anything else they did. And it's also less reliant on one single uh, play and one single player, as well as these big gigantic chunk plays that a lot of times they're not there in the playoffs. They're not there in these tight moment games. You can't rely on that in overtime, ironically, as uh, Derrick Henry rips off what was like a 60 yard run or whatever. You can't rely on those moments. In a lot of ways, come time playoffs, you want to avoid having death by a million paper cuts, and you also want to try to attack another team by death by a million paper cuts. Those teams that really rely on 
one singular play. Look at the 49ers right now, right? They're so Christian McCaffrey reliant. And when Christian McCaffrey's not there or when Christian McCaffrey can't get going, it's a different offense. It's a different team. It's a different identity. And that's what happens when you become too centered around, say, a quarterback like Lamar Jackson. And it's not to say that he can't, that he won't ball out. It's not to say that he can't run. It's not to say that he can't put up big numbers and have the moments and have the things that he's done. It's just a matter of you want to just use that as the as cliche as it gets as icing on the cake, right? It can't be the foundation. And when they start to make that the foundation, that's when that when from my viewpoint, it becomes a little bit more unsustainable and they struggle. And like I said, you know, this is the year for the Baltimore Ravens. It has to be, right? You have Derrick Henry, you have Lamar, you have this team. The the Chiefs look weaker, especially more injured than they were in any of the other years, right? That's been your kryptonite. The Bills don't look super sharp. The Bengals are obviously struggling significantly. The Texans are obviously a better team um, than they have been historically, but they're not a juggernaut dominant team, right? Um, the the NFC again, you have you have um, well, first off, the, the the Ravens have always dominated um, the NFC, but even putting that aside, the 49ers are struggling. The Cowboys are the Cowboys. The Eagles are, I don't you know, who knows what's going on with the Eagles. You have the Commanders who are coming, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. But, like, if you're afraid of the Commanders and if you lose to the Commanders, well, then you have no business winning a Super Bowl, right? If you can't beat the Commanders, then, I, I you know, it, then I don't know what type of uh contender you really were to begin with and it's not to say that you can't lose a regular season game it's just they they should not you should not fear them this should be your year so yeah that's why you really gotta not just look at this win and just be like this was an amazing win oh my god lamar mvp you know celebrate and that's why honestly brew did the whole thing that he did and that's why even i understand why nick was even like hey there's some causes for concerns because again the expectations are super bowl the expectations were just to have a great year and and make it to the playoffs and win a couple playoff games and yeah you could say that was wild that was exciting but like i keep saying in a lot of my ravens videos now it's if the expectations are to win a super bowl you gotta clean up some of this stuff you gotta be smarter with your game plan and you can't abandon it Whew. but those are just my thoughts i'd absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think about the Baltimore Ravens in that win? And how confident are you now in the Ravens? Are you more confident, less confident, same level of confidence? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.